Greg Ingle, CEO of Organigram. Thank you for coming on the show today. Oh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, a lot of things have been happening over the last little while, uh, and there's a, a special event coming up. <laughs> uh, October 17th, yeah. we've, we've got uh, legalization coming in in Canada. That's a massive milestone. Uh, what have you, how's, it, how's it been for yourself as this road to legalization from uh, all the different years in the company. Yeah, I mean, wh what's really exciting for us is, you know, certainly October 17th is a monumental event, not just within Canada, but globally, right? The world is yeah. really watching. And I think, you know, for Organogram, you know, we're currently um, in a great position in terms of, you know, not only our production levels and what we'll have available, we were smart in terms of bringing in automation early and working with the, some of the hiccups some other companies have had with things like excise stamps. We didn't yeah. have those hiccups. Um, but secondly, you know, we, we you know while we're a national player and we're providing you know across Canada to really all, all virtually almost all the provinces, we've got a really strong position in Atlantic Canada. And what's unique about that is that Atlantic Canada is the only part of the country where we're going to see fully built out retail stores on a comprehensive level on day one. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's important. New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI, Newfoundland all have their retail stores built out. Yeah. And I think that's really exciting. And so we're going to see more of a kind of true reflection of what the market's going to look like on day one, whereas in some other parts of the country, you know, a couple stores are open in some locations. And yeah. Ontario, for example, is online only yeah. at yeah. first. So, uh, so I think that that's great and, and very exciting part of what we're doing. And, you know, we're proud to be a maritime-based company, but uh, it's been a big plus for us. Yeah, and it's interesting, you say, uh, interesting that you say that because it's, it's true. I mean, our, our largest uh, economy, when speaking province and territory-wise, is, is Ontario. And we will not get that same footprint or those same measures like, oh, that's what recreation will look like. Right. We don't, uh, April 1st, we don't get our, our first stores open. Even then, I'm sure it'll have to take time from that as well. Uh, do you expect a lot of uh, online orders still coming for, uh, in, inside of Ontario? Is that going to be a big thing, or do you think a lot of people are just going to wait till up to April 1st. <laughs> well, I think it, it, it's really dependent. I mean, certainly everyone's comfortable in a world where Amazon has such a, you know, and other online retailers play a big part of everyone's lives. People are comfortable ordering online, but I think there's just something about, you know, that whole experience of visiting a retail store, talking to, you know, staff that have a full education, being able to talk about the brands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think you are going to see a difference in terms of the market pickup in, you know, a market like Ontario versus Atlantic Canada. It'll come over time. Um, we've also done some market research actually. Actually, we have a partner company that we work with in Colorado called The Green Team, and we've done yeah. some market research of their customer base to just really understand market dynamics of purchasing, whether or not you're a first-time purchaser or an ongoing kind of secondary third-time third, third purchaser. And certainly still the predominant number one experience people are looking for on day one is to visit a, visit a retail store. So, you know, I think that's where the Atlantic Canada is going to have an advantage. And there are other parts of the country like Manitoba and Alberta. They're going to have a small number of stores open. Um, but I think, you know, it's going to take time to see the same pickup. So what, what we will see is those markets that have online um, sales only will take longer to kind of build up over time, and and uh, and the other markets will certainly outpace them and outperform them in terms of a per you know per capita basis for sure. Yeah, and, it, and it's you know it's unique as well because not only is cannabis obviously quite different from alcohol, these other aspects where you know if I'm buying a bottle of wine, if I done my research into it and I like that bottle of wine, I'm just simply going to buy it again. Sure. If I could do it on the internet, that's fine. So it's a lot different for cannabis because not only does each strain, well, I guess like alcohol, it's very, very different, but there's a lot of unknown. There's a lot of people who, who want to go to that store and be like, okay, what's the difference between indica and sativa? Right. You know, what's the difference between this strain and this strain? This one's high CBD, this one's high THC. What does that mean? So it's going to be, I, it's, I think it's going to be harder to really get that message out over, uh, over the internet because it, if it's the internet, you really want to go there where if it's a store and you're just walking by, like, well, that's interesting it might entice you to come in. So we'll see how that's going, but uh, it seems like out in the, uh, the Maritimes, you guys are gonna be fully, yeah, and I think, fully running. I, I think it depends on the consumer, right? So certainly an existing consumer who knows what they want, knows what they're looking for, they're gonna be able to kind of go online and make decisions based on that, and they may not be able to, you know, they may not want to or need to. And even some kind of returning or new consumers will go online and make purchases. But, you know, we look at three groups of consumers, right? They're existing cannabis consumer, there's the new user that's never used the product and says, hey, I wanna try this now that it's legal. And then there's, we call them the boomerang user, which is someone who's 
abused at a different point in their life and is deciding now that it's legal they want to come back. And I think, you know, for those users and the new users, there's a lot of education and interaction. Now there will be resources available online and when you visit sites there'll be information on products. Yeah. Um, but I think that whole retail experience is going to be one that, you know, a lot of those consumers certainly are, are looking for. And I, I know we're expecting increased call volume pretty <laughs> quickly in terms yeah. of our client services. It's one of the things the provinces have talked to us about are, yeah. are you going to be handle some of these inbound calls from you know potential consumers that are asking questions about their pro your product once they buy it and so absolutely we're prepared for that yeah and that's good to hear uh, now something you're also going to be prepared for very recently so uh, or organogram is just recently I believe gotten your uh, whether it's the last application or you did get your or uh, organic, organic certification. certification back yeah, so uh, that's yeah, no, guys. very significant for us in terms of you know today is uh, you know as I understand there's only ourselves and Whistler that are actually producing organically grown cannabis in in the mm -hmm. country and um, and uh, we have our roots are in organic production historically that's all we did um, we lost our organic certification at the end of 2016 and we've been working diligently with EcoCert to retain that back mm -hmm. um, that being said it's only a portion of our production it's less than five percent of our total production mm -hmm. um, because you know while at the end of the day there's a demand for an organic product and um, what we've seen is that you can never get the same yields that you can get through mineral production you know yeah. we've got some of the highest yields in the industry which has been able to help drive down our costs um, to be one of the lowest costs or if not the lowest in the industry uh, with organic you'll never reach that number um, because it is a bit more challenging you're not able mm -hmm. to provide as much you know um, material into the product into the plant in terms of uh, driving fertigation feeding the plant and what you want to uh, do to it. so it's certainly at the end of the day you're not getting uh, as robust a plant, you're still getting a very healthy plant, it's grown organically, uh, but your yields will never be the same. But exciting for us nonetheless, and we know both medically and recreationally there's going to be a demand for organically grown product. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can definitely see uh, that there'll be a demand, so it's, it's interesting that you, you're able to meet that demand because there's there won't be that many players out doing that. That's right. Uh, and, and forgive me, I, I believe yours is the three tier system, is that correct? Yeah, one of the things that makes us unique, so you know, if you go and back it, that, that and is. production, yeah, so. So one of the things that makes this very unique is in the early days of the program, it was difficult to get expansion on the footprint of your license. So um, the company made a decision to actually build vertical <laughs> versus you know, trying to go horizontally. So each of our production rooms is actually three different levels and we operate in three different levels. And so it's been basically our continued expansion and we're now capable of producing 36,000 kilos fully licensed oh, nice. for that is all built out kind of with the next iteration of that three level grow. And what it allows us to do is it's very efficient and cost effective in terms of, you know, environmental controls and we've invested heavily in environmental controls. And we've seen that it also kind of drives yields for us in terms of just, you know, having single strain rooms that can produce a million grams wet, um, you know, and, and just the volume of that is so, so much so that, it, you know, it's a huge advantage for us. But also when you're controlling the environment and, you know, in a very technical way, you know, the product that you're getting on the third level on the right hand side is the same as on the lower level on the left. So we've really perfected that exp uh, that uh, growing methodology. So. And 36,000 kilograms, is that already growing right now or is it coming on online? No, that's, that's fully, that's so uh, we completed our phase three at the end of June, so we've been harvesting yep. from that. So we're kind of on a run rate of 36,000 kilos and then yep. our four, phase four A and B uh, are currently under construction and that'll bring us up to you know over 60,000 and then uh, up to 89,000 um, mm -hmm. kilos in production by August of next year. Yeah, because that, that's actually a, a significant amount going into legalization. Uh, have you found any like smaller LPs who have these, uh, they, they've got commitments to one party or the other, do you find that they're coming to you saying, hey, we need product? Uh, we've had from both, so certainly a lot of demand from uh, from small LPs looking or large LPs that are looking to buy wholesale product, and we're not wholesaling to anyone because we have a demand for our product in the market. Yeah. We've also had the various jurisdictions and both public and private retailers coming to us looking for additional product as well. So, um, you know, we've seen some challenges. Some companies have faced some challenges out there, and I think you know they're not able to meet their su supply fulfillment and supply demand. So, yeah. um, provinces have come to companies like Organogram looking for additional product. Um, so we're in a you know, great position to supply the market and we're excited about October 17th. Yeah, absolutely. And as I'm getting something uh, stuck <laughs> in my... Sorry. <coughs> give a good cough there. But no, it's, it's interesting because there's so many different cannabis companies out there right now and people are trying to differentiate uh, who are going to be the winners and who are going to be the losers. And to have this footprint already and to get that organic uh, certification back, that puts you in a, a really good position going into legalization because 
it's not just legalization, it's, it's, it's the world. Absolutely. And, and being able to expand, you know, you need to be able to have that product to, ex to export what we want to expand. So yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, well, I think you, you look at kind of, you know, to, to give your perspective, our perspective certainly on kind of winners and losers is execution is key as a starting point, right? I mean, you've got to be executing and you've got to be executing against your plans. One thing we're most proud of is when we've shared with the market our timelines to do our build outs, we've hit those timelines. And, you know, our phase two came on in February, our phase three came on in June, and that was what we committed to the market. I think so execution regardless of what aspect you're doing is key. Brand development is also critical and we've created a comprehensive house of brands and um, you know I think that's one of the key aspects of what we're doing at the end of the day consumers are used to looking at brands and they're going to be one so we've done a lot of market research to create our brands and yeah. develop like the Edison Cannabis Company. Um, but I think also your your last point was you know in terms of international I think you know we're approaching international a couple different ways one is finding partners uh, in the local markets for production and then looking for distribution partners across Europe for example yep. we're already exporting both oils and dried flour into Australia um, we've got a partner company in Germany that we're going down the process now of submitting for uh, a production uh, tender through the tender process there so I think you know there's a ton of opportunities globally and Canadian companies are in a position over the next couple of years um, you know to really take advantage of that and, and we're focused on that international market as well yeah well hey I appreciate all the information you gave to our investors you're obviously on the stock exchange OGI is that TSX Venture now? TSX Venture yep. and then we're in the US on the QX under OGRMF Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm sure we'll have you on again soon, and we'll do a recap of how uh, legalization is <laughs> going and see how everything's uh, been transpiring. Awesome. Thanks again for having me.